So yeah, that's me. An MA student living at home with my parents, working multiple part-time jobs and dreaming of getting into publishing. And I was mega depressed. Why, you may ask? Because I got to the final interview for my dream job, a publicity assistant at Vintage, and got rejected. I thought I did everything right. I got to the final interview, I emailed them to say thank you, and I bribed them with alcohol. No JK, I didn't do that. But I'm actually really glad that I didn't get that job because it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I can actually say that what I'm doing now is what I envisioned my dream job to be. So if you're like me from 2020, stick around because I am going to tell you how I went from this to this and am now an international communications assistant at Penguin Random House UK. Hello friend, it is Priyanka, or PM in writing or on stage here, and today we are getting into my publishing journey, and oh boy, is it a long one. So if you're just here for publishing industry advice and tips, and you don't really care about my personal journey, I will leave timestamps below if you just want to skip to the part that you're interested in, but for everyone else, let's get into the tea. So this all started in 2020. What a amazing time to be a graduate, am I right? I decided that I wanted to go into publishing, but had no prior experience and no connections in the industry as well as like, what do I do? And so I decided to do a master's in creative writing and publishing. And I started my master's in around October of 2020 and then started taking my job search more seriously around November 2020 and got my first job at PRH UK in May 2021. So honestly, if you're not ready for this level of commitment, this one-sided relationship that you're gonna have with publishing, it ain't gonna happen. Now in January of 2021 is when I took my job search even more seriously because I made this bad boy of a spreadsheet. And during my job search, I came across this lovely magazine called Her Street who were looking for an unpaid editorial intern and I had the luxury of living at home and not having to pay rent. So I was like, let me take it for the experience. And that was also around the time that I started this YouTube channel and my blog. Hello, just an editor's note to say that I don't actually focus on my blog anymore, but I have a blog post that I wrote called Day in the Life of a PR and Admin Assistant, which was my first job that I got at Penguin. And it breaks down all the stuff that I usually do day to day and also the skills that you might need for that role so if you're interested i'll leave it in the description and through my youtube channel and my blog was basically kind of the main way that i was able to make connections with people in the industry so for example i applied for a publicity assistant role at head of zeus didn't get the job but what i did is i reached out to the publicity director who interviewed me and said hey thank you so much for interviewing me could i get a review copy of one of your poetry books which was A Fire In My Head by Ben Oakry, which actually turned into this video here and was also seen by Ben Oakry himself, which is still one of my biggest YouTube wins of today. So throughout this time, I was also always on Twitter. Not great for my mental health because I saw everyone was getting into publishing and I was still living at home, but it was good because it helped me find a lot of publishing webinars and informative videos that I could watch to help me build my knowledge of the industry. I remember back in the day, Bloomsbury did like an introduction to marketing and publicity. And I think it cost like two pounds to get into. So it was pretty accessible. And I met two key people who really helped me push my journey forward. So thank you to them if they are watching. The first was a lovely uh, South Asian person on Twitter who was offering people from marginalized voices or people who weren't generally represented in publishing the opportunity to chat to her about any kind of questions they had about the industry. And the second was a lovely queer person who was working at PRH UK, who similarly was offering marginalized people the chance to look over their CVs and cover letters. And this was probably something that helped me the most because she was reading stuff and being like, nah, publishers don't actually want to see that. And I was like, oh shit, I've been doing everything wrong. The other key thing that happened around this time was I attended a one day conference about how to get into editorial hosted by bad form and if you don't know who bad form are you are missing out so i will leave a link to them in the description and i didn't actually end up getting into editorial clearly but that conference gave me one key piece of advice that i still give to every single person who reaches out to me today to remember and that is is that when you are applying for an entry-level job 
let's say you're applying for an editorial assistant, they do not want you to be an editor. You are essentially a glorified PA. And that is so true because in your first couple of years in publishing, it will just be mostly admin based tasks. It, that's probably a bit harsher than it's meant to come across, but it's true. So I kept applying for jobs and after about 100 applications, 10 or 20 second round interviews and three to five final interviews, I finally got my job at Penguin Random House UK as a PR and admin assistant under the Penguin Press division. And I think another thing that really helped me get to this stage was that from the editorial conference, I actually met someone who was then working at Penguin Press who offered to do a practice interview with me and that was so helpful beforehand going in. So I started my job and was super excited and really interested in the publicity side of stuff. But around 2022 was when I realized that this job might not be right for me. And as grateful as I am for having that job as my first introduction to publishing, it also made me realize a couple things. Firstly, that publishing is a very white industry. And honestly, being a POC in such a white industry can be tough sometimes. And I realized that the books that I was helping publicize weren't necessarily books that I was passionate about. And my contract was temporary anyways. So I was like, I need to get another job before I'm yeeted out of my flat. I applied for jobs and I got my job as an international communications assistant at PeerH UK. And now I'm vibing with the job and I'm very happy with it. I just want to add though, that my whole publishing journey was not as linear as I had made it out to be. There was a lot of ups and downs. I took a lot of breaks from applying to jobs and this condensed version does not include all the times I was really sad and feeling incredibly depressed about my situation like you saw at the beginning of the video. So that's just something to keep in mind. So now let's get into my top four tips. If you're looking to get into a marketing, publicity or communications, which basically means marketing and publicity combined, roll. And these tips will be based on the biggest obstacles that I faced when I was looking for entry level jobs. The first obstacle that I faced was having a lack of industry knowledge and a lack of any connections at all. And the way that I overcame this, in case you couldn't tell, is by reaching out to people online. Before I applied for a role, what I'd usually do is message the person on LinkedIn who had been in that role previously to ask them, hey, do you think there's anything that I should know before I apply for this job? And more often than not, people would reply to me and say, hey, I think you need X, Y, Z. But if people didn't reply to me on LinkedIn, I'd usually reach out to people on Twitter. Um, not sure where the best place to reach out is now, considering all the stuff happening with Twitter. Maybe try TikTok if you see people there. Uh, there are a couple like publishing YouTubers that I know, which I'll leave in the description too. And I tried to just absorb all the publishing knowledge that I could like a sponge. So attending webinars set up by publishing houses. But also I remember back in the day, there was like a whole playlist about how to get into publishing from Penguin Random House, which was so useful. I just gobbled it up. And honestly, the more clued up you are about the industry, the easier it will make your job applications because you'll actually be able to understand what they're asking of you. Also, if you can show a little bit of industry knowledge, particularly about the specific department that you're applying to, simple stuff like knowing the difference between marketing and publicity, knowing what comms means, it will signal that you're interested in being at that publisher's long term and that you're willing to put in the work and learn while you're on the job. So the second biggest hurdle that I faced was a lack of work experience. Usually entry level publishing jobs are looking for three key skills, which are organization, prioritization and communication. And if you can find some kind of work experience, doesn't even have to be in publishing that will help you to get those three skills down. That's all you need to do. So for example, like volunteering at a bookshop, in Oxfam was something that I was looking into at the time, something like an unpaid internship where you're part of a team and you're learning to manage your own tasks. The Publishing Post is also really great for this because it's a magazine that's run by publishing hopefuls who are also trying to get experience, particularly for marketing and publicity as well, because you'll have to contact people for interviews like you might have to do on the job or design stuff as well. Small publishers are also looking for help always, so you can always reach out to them as well and be like, hi, I'm a publishing hopeful. Can I design a couple graphics for you on Canva? 
something to just build up your experience that way too. The next biggest hurdle that I faced was a lack of confidence and imposter syndrome. And this is a really difficult one because it's so personal, but honestly, if you're watching this video, I can guarantee you're probably more competent than you think you are. And remember, when you're just starting out, the stakes might seem a lot higher from the outside, but when you're actually in the job, if you know how to spell stuff correctly, if you know how to make a PowerPoint and send emails and be diplomatic, you are good to go. And most of the time you'll learn stuff on the job anyways. And if you have a good manager, they will help you feel comfortable. And I think when you're just starting out as well, that's why I highly recommend reaching out to people because it's so nice to have someone in your corner when you're feeling that way that you can go to and be like, hey, I'm feeling a little bit down about this job. I don't think I'm going to get it. And they'll be like, no, you'll be fine, you know? And honestly, it's good to remember that you can talk to five different people in publishing and everyone will have different ways that they got into the industry. One way is not more or less valid than another way because it's not something like engineering or accounting where you take on a specific qualification and then you get into the industry. Creative industries are wild and the way people get into them or like move around is completely different. And my final biggest hurdle was my lack of skills in comms or marketing and publicity. And this is why it's so important to build up your industry knowledge. Because even if you know stuff like the difference between marketing and publicity, you can be like, okay, in marketing, it's more social media based. Let me try and learn skills like Photoshop and InDesign if you have access to it. If not, Canva is also great. Or if it's publicity based, you can maybe start organizing your own events or chatting to book bloggers because that is mostly what you'll be doing in publicity as well. And it's good to remember that a lot of marketing and publicity in particular as well is just relationship building. Publicity in particular is obviously a bigger part of that because a lot of the times you will be making relationships with journalists so that you can pitch certain books to them but marketing as well to some extent because you might be making connections with influencers as well and so if you are able to try and show that you have some kind of relationship building skill like the example that i gave earlier where i was able to make connections with publicists through my own book blog and also through being actually rejected from jobs you don't necessarily have to learn photoshop and indesign like i said but it's just good to have some awareness that they are going to be used while you're on the job. And honestly, if people are willing to give you the job in the first place, they will probably also be willing to give you training. So you don't need to worry about that. So thank you so much for sticking around until the end of the video. If you did, comment below your biggest struggle on getting into the publishing industry right now. And I will see if I can try and reply and help you out and maybe give a little bit of advice. Just remember that it does take a really long time but if you try and build up your industry knowledge your skills your network i promise you will get there eventually don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you need any more incentive to get into publishing you can check out this video here which is a haul of all the free books that i have gotten from work from prh uk and it was so long that i had to split it into two parts and as always i hope you're having a lovely day and i will see you over there in the next video. Bye.